Hey, what's up, everybody? Frankie Slauson here for another great Frankie Slauson show interview. And uh, you'll never guess who I got today. I get a chance to interview the original Blue Blue Ranger of the hit series, the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Mr. David Yost. How's it going, David? Very well. Thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, I appreciate uh, appreciate uh, you taking the time to let me chat with you for a little bit. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, definitely an honor to have you. Thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Oh yeah, I've always been a fan of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I grew up watching the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and and, and back in the mid nineties, I mean that was when that came out. That was like the that was the big thing in pop culture, and it lasted for quite a long time. And uh, you were you played the original Blue Ranger. How how uh, like you had to audition, obviously, but uh, what what did, did you actually get the uh, the job for it after you auditioned? When, so again, what did I, oh, what did I, I actually get for? I mean, like, uh, like, did you, uh, when you auditioned, uh, were you auditioning just for it to be the Blue Ranger, or, or were you auditioning for any of the Rangers? Well, when I originally auditioned for the show, I started off uh, auditioning for the role of Jason, the Red Ranger. Um, but at that time, we didn't know what the colors were or anything like that. We just knew the characters' names and, like, a brief description of them. So uh, I auditioned for the role of Jason for about, I would say, three, I had three auditions for that. Um, But through the process, I realized that I wasn't going to get that role. So I uh, asked the casting director uh, if she would allow me to read for the role of Billy. Um, And uh, she did. And then I had about five auditions, what we call callbacks, um, for that role. And I was lucky enough to score that gig. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and, and uh, you know, it, it's kind of nice because you know, it, it really got you. It got you noticed pretty well. Well, a lot of, a lot of times, you know, uh, people always thought that there was other people playing the uh, like like they knew that you guys were playing the characters of the Rangers, but like, but the the characters. Uh, sometimes they wonder if the people that were actually in the suits were the people that were the actors and not just like a, a stunt double or somebody else, like how they do like in Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. Right. So, uh, so yeah, <laughs> but everybody knew that it was you guys, you know, because of the martial arts and, and the and the uh, just the fact that every everything that you guys did was uh, uh, choreographed pretty well. And uh, uh, did you guys have to go to some martial arts schools uh, in order to train to to be able to at least choreograph the uh, me and the Rangers? Well, I do need to correct you. Um, So, I mean, it is pretty common knowledge that we were not necessarily in the suits during the fights. We did, in fact, have stunt doubles when you saw people in costume because it was too dangerous to have uh, the actual lead actors of the television show uh, do those because of the limited mobility and the limited visibility. So uh, we did all of our own fights outside of costume. Um, And yes, we were martial artists and gymnasts and dancers, and so that helped us uh, to learn uh, the fights. I mean, we would choreograph everything before we filmed it, and uh, and then we would film the fights. But when you see the characters in costume, um, it's pretty common knowledge that the first season uh, was actually Japanese footage that we cut into the American television show. And then after the first season, we started filming all of that footage here in the United States, but again, it was mostly stunt doubles doing the fights. Oh, okay. I, I guess I, I guess I was kind of confused by that because I, I, I just would have thought that. Well, I, I guess yeah. I mean, you are right. I mean, it, it is common knowledge because you, you know, you don't want the, you don't want the actors to get hurt, let alone the stunt people to get hurt either. But, but I, I guess that's uh, no different. I guess. Um, also, uh, when, when you uh, after while you guys were doing the the Power Rangers, uh, the Power Rangers movie, I really I, I can remember that you know like it was yesterday. To me, it was probably one of the greatest Power Ranger movies ever. Uh, when you guys found out that you guys were going to be making a movie, uh, was that uh, a pretty a pretty big big task for you guys to take up? Uh, well, I don't know if it was a big task because we had been doing the TV show, so it wasn't. Too much different. Obviously, it was very exciting for us because, uh, you know, we get to have a big studio, 20th Century Fox, 
come in and put in millions of dollars to film this uh, movie with us. So that was exciting. Um, and everything was on a bigger and grander scale, and our costumes I thought were a lot more exciting to to wear and uh, perform in. And uh, we got to go to Australia for six months and film the movie, so that was fun. Um, and Ivan Ooze, uh, <laughs> who was the main villain, uh, probably one of my favorite villains from the whole Power Rangers mm-hmm. uh, series and movie, obviously. So uh, it was fun to work with Paul Freeman, who played that character. Yeah, I I, uh, I definitely enjoyed the Ivan Ooze character. To me, I, I really feel that he was uh, also the probably one of the coolest bad guys. Let alone let alone Lord Zed and, and Rita Repulsa. But I mean, I just the movie was was really awesome. I uh, I, I don't I forget what it grossed uh, in, in in the box office, but I I knew that when I saw it in theaters that it was going to be something special. And uh, end up being something special. It just looks a lot, you know, a lot different than uh, the, the the normal TV show because of what you were talking about with the Japanese uh, crossover and stuff. Right. But yeah, uh, yeah go ahead. Okay. No, I was just agreeing with what you were uh, saying. Okay. Um, and then my next question: uh, When you guys uh, like eventually throughout the show. Uh, you uh, worked with other people too, like the uh, well, the Red Ranger changed a couple times or two or three other times while you were working. I think it twice or, or once or whatever. I, I kind of forget a little bit because it's been a while since I've seen the series, but uh, but I do remember there was a change. Um, well, uh, how many changes do you remember that took place uh, throughout the Rangers? <laughs> I know it's a weird uh, question. Well, I mean- when I left the show, I was the longest running uh, original cast member on the show. Uh-huh. So I got to uh, be witness to a lot of changes. Um, but yes, uh, halfway through season two, um, the black, the red, and the yellow ranger, Austin, Walter, and Twee, uh, left the show and they were replaced. Um, and then as time went on, uh, Amy Jo left the show and... Uh, Karen Ashley left the show, so the Yellow Ranger was replaced again, and the Pink Ranger was replaced. Um, so then everybody kind of switched a little bit. So, sure. um, yeah, I mean, I was there for a lot of it, and uh, it made uh, working interesting to get to work with different actors and new people. So it was fun. Oh, that's that's cool. Uh, and I suppose it feels kind of nice just the fact to, to know that you were one of the longest running uh, original Rangers sure uh, yeah I mean I enjoyed my job I enjoyed the role of Billy and I was uh, lucky enough to play him and hopefully people when they watch the show if they go back and watch it now through DVDs or Netflix they'll see you know that Billy my character really gets to go on a journey from being a uber what I would call it, Uber Geek, but like super smart, and then he just sort of became like uh, a man, like he really got to grow up during the series, and you know, his look changed, and his smarts uh, changed in different ways, and um, he finally ended, ended coming to another planet, so <laughs> he's, <laughs> off in space. he's off in space somewhere having a good time, which I think is awesome. Yeah, and then... Uh, yeah, and, and, and that's just the thing, you know. I mean, what change, I mean, you know, comes, you know, you, you just never know what to expect. But it, but it ended up working out in the end anyway. And, and, and now, you know, after it's been so many years since, uh, well, it's been you know, damn, damn near two decades since you were uh, uh, part of the, the Blue Ray, or original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, obviously. Uh, now, you know, there's been uh, conventions and stuff that you've been a part of. How How's that uh, for you to be able to just... Uh, to meet your fans, meet all the fans that, that have always wanted to say, you know, hey, I want to meet, uh, I want to meet the Rangers if I ever get a chance. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been really exciting and awesome and uh, humbling to get to travel around the world and go to different Comic Cons and meet with fans of the uh, Power Rangers. Um, you know, it's, it's so interesting to be part of a show that had such an amazing impact on so many people's lives. And as an actor, you know, when I got the show, I never would have, I never would have thought 20 years later that I'd still be talking about it yeah. uh, or hearing or hearing from people about it as far as how, you know, they really did uh, learn a lot of lessons from the Power Rangers and it helped them become the people that they are. 
uh, whether it be they got into martial arts. A lot of people that related to my character went on to um, become scientists or somehow work in the technology field. So I always uh, appreciate hearing stories like that. And, um, you know, we also hear a lot of stories about people that had really bad ch uh, child childhoods and uh, how the only thing that they felt that really saved them uh, was the Power Rangers. And that was the one thing that they could always find some kind of escape in. And so, I mean, we hear a lot of really touching, heartwarming stories. Um, and, you know, I personally am just really grateful to be part of a franchise, uh, one of the most successful children's television franchises of all time, um, and to know that it had a, uh, a real, uh, tangible impact on people's lives. And, and it kind of made, made the assumption, too, that uh, that a lot of people looked up to you guys as kind of like superheroes, you know, because you always hear about Batman, Superman, and all that stuff, but the Power Rangers was kind of like a superhero, too, and, and uh, it, it impacted a lot of people's lives, just like you were talking about. Yeah, exactly, and I think, uh, you know, since we played teenagers, um, I just think uh, a lot of people were able to relate to some of the the different scenarios that were going on within our dynamic as friends, as Power Rangers being friends, and so everybody could relate to at least one character, if not all of the characters on some level. Sure. So what have you been up to lately there, David? Well, uh, I have spent a lot of time working behind the scenes uh, in television um, as a producer, as a location manager, uh, I've also held, like, corporate jobs for companies. I've sold TV shows, so um, I do a lot of different things. <laughs> uh, but uh, lately, because of the Comic-Con circuit and how popular it is right now, I seem to be traveling a lot almost every weekend, going somewhere uh, and meeting fans, and uh, that kind of makes it difficult for me to commit to doing any productions uh, during the year, but uh, sure. I definitely enjoy getting to go to Comic-Cons uh, a lot, and it's less stressful for me, so <laughs> I'm, I'm appreciative of that. <laughs> well, that's that's kind of neat. Uh, what was, you know, if, if I may, like, uh, go back to, like, the, the very first uh, time you ever went to a Comic-Con, uh, what was that experience like for you when you first started saying that I'm going to commit to start going to Comic-Cons? Uh, well, I didn't really understand what I was getting into. Um, the first one that I did was down in Florida, in Orlando with Jason David Frank, um, Anime Fest Orlando is what it's called. And, uh, you know, I just kind of show, uh, showed up not knowing what to expect and kind of was like a little overwhelmed <laughs> um, by the fans. And then as I started doing more and more, I was even more overwhelmed with uh, the impact that the show had on people's lives. I just, uh, I just find it hard to comprehend why people would still want to meet us after 20 years and take pictures with us and get our autographs, but uh, people do it every weekend. It's pretty crazy and exciting. And it's a good feeling. It, it has to make you feel really good inside just to, just to know that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not on an ego level, but <laughs> on a, a heartfelt level, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and the thing is, you know, I, I think what they look at, they, they realize, because I, I'm sure a lot of people have seen you guys on YouTube, and they, 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 you know, just from other comic cons or interviews that you've done, and realize that you guys are, you know, you guys are just down-to-earth people, and you're people just like us, except the only thing that was different about it is the fact that you guys, you know, happen to be the Biomorph from Power Rangers. You know, but other than that, I mean, you guys are very down-to-earth, and you care about your fans, or, or you won't commit to these things. Exactly. Well, I appreciate uh, you taking the time to let me speak to you there, David. Uh, um, I got a little starstruck, I'll, I'll admit, because, you know, this is kind of a big deal. You're, you're kind of a, one of those uh, big guests. I mean, whether it's an ego or not, you know, it, it's the fact is that it, it's really cool to have you on the show, and uh, I do appreciate uh, you spending a little time with me. Okay, not a problem. I appreciate, again, you having me on the show. All right. Well, thank you very much, David. All right. Thank you. You have a great day. Yep. And that was David Yost, the original Blue Ranger from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this interview. And uh, other than that, uh, we'll be right back for some more Frankie Slauson with the old Reb <laughs> here on K-Tech. 
We'll be right back right after this.